Welcome back to Barbecue and Bottles. I'm Jared and today we are going to be making a French dip sandwich and we're going to be using a really cheap cut of meat and frankly the price of beef is just going crazy right now. So we wanted to do a recipe that incorporates a little bit of a cheaper cut because we know like ribeyes right now are double the price that they used to be a year ago. So this guy right here, this cost us $35 Canadian, so that's about $25 US. And this thing weighs 3.4 kilos, which is about seven pounds. So it's a really cheap cut on a per pound basis here. So we're just gonna get this open, gonna get the void padded down here. And now this recipe, we actually did a 60 second version of it. We posted it here on YouTube Shorts and over on TikTok. And I think here on YouTube Shorts, within a month of posting it, we're at 5.7 million views on that as of the time of the filming of this. It's just crazy. Our, absolutely our most popular video ever. So I figured, why not make a longer form version of this? People clearly liked it. And I don't want you to miss any of the really small, subtle details of making this out of the park sandwich. Now that we've got this out of the package, we're just gonna trim some of the fat off here and we're gonna get some of this silver skin off. So that silver skin, that's not gonna render off properly over the course of our cook. So we're just gonna get in there, carve some of that off. Just expose the beef underneath. You want a really sharp knife for this. We're using a boning knife. It's got a bendy, flexible tip and it's kind of a finer tip than you'd get on say a regular chef's knife and it just helps you get in under that silver skin like this and then work your knife down the roast. I should have mentioned is an eye of round and the eye of round, again, super cheap. Now the French dip sandwich is typically made with a ribeye and sliced really thinly, but the way that we're gonna prepare this, we can get this eye of round down nice and tender. It's normally a tough cut of meat, but again, we're gonna show you how to make this really nice and tender, just like you made this sandwich with a ribeye. So now we've got all the silver skin off here and this is ready to season up. Now with that silver skin removed, we don't have to worry about this being too chewy at the end. That silver skin doesn't render down over the course of the cook, even though we're gonna do this low and slow on the smoker. So you wanna get that removed. Now we're just going in, just a little salt and pepper, get this all over the roast. Go in with our freshly ground black pepper. We're going in with a fairly coarse grind on this as well. Flip it over, do the other side. And you'll see we left the fat cap on here. That's just because the actual fat cap is gonna add some flavor as that renders down. This is gonna take about four hours from start to finish. So that fat cap as it melts, will just bring a really nice flavor profile and juiciness to our eye of rand. So now we're gonna get our grill screaming hot and sear this off. So now we've got our grill just ripping hot here. We'll get our eye of round down in the middle. And all we're trying to do here is sear this off and get a nice dark brown crust on all sides of this. It's not gonna be cooked through. We're gonna be doing that low and slow in the smoker, but you want some of the admired reaction just to create that caramelized exterior here because that brings with it a really nice flavor profile to the beef rub. Get this flipped over. You can see some of the fat on the fat cap starting to render down. That's what we're looking for. Getting some of these nice dark brown grill marks. We'll flip this a couple times before the whole roast looks like this. Make sure you give this, the fat cap a nice sear here. We've got the burners on high. We've got our sear station on. So this grill is ripping hot. It's probably about seven or 800 degrees at the grate level. Just look at that fat cap sear, eh? So just look at that. That is the brown color that we're looking for right there. So we can get this guy off, get it into the smoker. All right, so after we took this off the grill, we've got it onto a baking tray that we've just lined with aluminum foil. And we're gonna wanna capture the drippings off of this roast when it's in the smoker. So that's why we've put it in here. It's gonna help us form the au jus that we're making with this. And those renderings are just gonna add a wicked flavor profile to the beef broth that we're gonna make. 
So now we just get our temp probe into the thickest part of our roast. Get that right into the center here. And this is gonna roast away in our vertical smoker. We're gonna be running our Bradley P10 vertical smoker at 250 degrees. We're gonna be using hickory biscuits to generate the smoke. We'll set this for about three and a half to four hours until the internal temp hits 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we'll pull this and start making our French dip sandwiches. So we're gonna make some caramelized onions here that are gonna get really nice and dark and rich, umami flavored with a bit of sweetness. So we've got these white sweet onions and we're just gonna come down and shave these, not quite as thin as you do for say a smash burger, a little bit thicker, but these are gonna caramelize down. It'll be really nice and soft. And I'll do that with two more onions. So we've got three in total. Then we'll prep our garlic. All right. All right, we're just over at the side burner for the grill. Get this fired up. Get our cast iron skillet down on here. We're gonna use some of the bacon fat that we've had from a leftover cook. So this is just after making bacon in the house all that rendering in the bottom. We just poured it into a mason jar and store that in the fridge, keeps for a couple weeks. Now, if you don't have bacon fat, feel free just to use olive oil. We, we use avocado oil a lot on this channel. You just want a healthy amount there in the base of the pan. And with that mostly melted, now we're gonna drop in our onions. You wanna break these up as you drop it into the skillet. Get all three of the onions in here at the same time. Now we'll just let that simmer away here. We've got this on low to medium heat. This is probably gonna take 60 minutes from start to finish. And you wanna just stir it periodically just to make sure your onions aren't burning. All right, now we are gonna make the jus. And we're just going in with some beef broth here. You can make your own, boiling down the bones. We're just cheating here using the pre-made store-bought stuff. And then to that, we're gonna add a little bit of beef bouillon. And this is just going to make it a richer, beefier taste. So I'll bring this up to a simmer and just simmer this down over the course of the next 20 or 30 minutes. Get that bouillon melted in there. Get it fully dissolved into the beef broth. You can see how much darker it is now relative to just the initial broth. So we've just hit 130 on our temp probe. Now that was at the three hour mark. So this actually cooked a little bit faster than our last one. We will get this out. Just look at that, beautiful. So we've got the eye of round roast off here and we need this to rest for 15 to 20 minutes before we carve into it. So what we're gonna do in the meantime, is finish off the caramelized onions and the jus. So what we need to do is add all these renderings that have come out of the roast into the jus, and that's gonna make it super rich, super, super flavorful. Just add a nice new flavor profile and a hint of smokiness to that jus. So now we'll get the roast transferred over to the cutting board here. Let that finish resting. So the onions are coming along nicely here. We actually pressed in six cloves of garlic into this as the caramelization was starting to happen. Don't do the garlic first, otherwise you'll burn that in the skillet. Now with that caramelized in here, there's one extra step to finish off these onions, and that's just to ladle out a spoonful of your jus. Get that in there. That's gonna enhance it, add some of the extra umami beef flavor to your caramelized onions, and just really bring this whole recipe together. So we'll just keep simmering these onions till all of that evaporates. All right, we've finally got our caramelized onions to where we need them to be. Just look at that. There's gonna be a bunch of sweetness in here because these white onions are sweet as you caramelize them down. And then there's gonna be that umami richness from the beef stock. It's gonna be great on these sandwiches. So we'll just get our grill turned off here, our stock's ready. So let's make our horseradish sauce and then carve into that roast. All right, now we're gonna make a bit of horseradish sauce. So for that, really simple. Just get a couple scoops of mayo, get that down in there. And then we're coming in with a couple tablespoons of actual horseradish. Now this is 
really powerful stuff. So you might want to add a little bit, mix it together, see if that actually fits with your flavor profile or preferences. And if it's not quite spicy enough or horseradishy enough, then just add to it. Hit a little bit of freshly ground salt in there. And let's give it a taste. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna need to slice up the roast. So we're just gonna come in here and you wanna slice this really nice and thinly. Now this has been resting for about 15 or 20 minutes. I know you're seeing some juice come out here just as we carve into it. This isn't blood, this is myoglobin. This is rested for at least 15 minutes. You want thin little slices of this because that's actually gonna make it more tender just as you bite into the sandwich. You're not gonna have a big chunk of this meat to bite through. So just take your time, nice and slowly. You can just smell that. Those hickory biscuits from the Bradley, just love those. And you can see the fat cap, like it was pretty big at the start of this, but just look at how much of that's rendered down. There really isn't that much fat that's actually left on this roast. And all those renderings went into our jus. All right, we've got our eye of round all sliced up here. We've got some of those renderings or the myoglobin that has just dripped out. So we're gonna add that to our jus. Now it's time to build the sandwich. So we're using these French crusty rolls. The bread's really important here. And you want something that's a firm bun because we're gonna be dipping it into that jus and you want the bun to still be able to hold some structure. So slice that down the middle. What we're gonna do is on one side, we're gonna get on that horseradish sauce. Be generous with it. Beauty. The top bun, we're gonna go in with some mustard. This is actually some triple crunch mustard from Coslix. This is absolutely one of my all time favorites. It's like a crunchy Dijon. So we'll get that on top. Now we're gonna take our bottom bun We'll get some of the caramelized onions on there with that garlic and the beef broth. This is gonna be a messy sandwich. So now we build. So just grab a bunch of beef. Again, go for some thin slices. Put on as much or as little beef as you want. Gonna get the top on. Just look at that sandwich. That is ridiculous. Now, get an extra bowl. Get your beef stock over here. Ladle that out into a bowl. Oh, you can see all the fat on the surface of that. That's just all flavor, pure flavor. So we're gonna come in here, cut this on the bias. Just look at that sandwich. So we've made a bit of a mess here, but now, there's only one thing left to do, and that's go in for a taste test. So we've got Kai here. He's gonna help us with the taste test on this one. Apparently I'm biased. I can't give unbiased opinions on my own cooking. So we've got two halves to this sandwich. We'll see what Kai thinks. Now when you cut it on the bias, the reason you do that is so that you can take that triangle end and just dip it into the jus. You want that thick bread just to absorb a ton of the sauce or the juice in English. You just bite into that. That's pretty good. The first bite, all I got was the bread with that. The bread with that. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> if the bread's too thick for you, you can actually just like hollow out the bun itself, just like this and just go in with less of the actual bread itself. But frankly, the bun is just a vessel for the jus. So I wouldn't recommend it. Go in with the thick bread. It packs a ton of flavor and really makes or breaks the sandwich. How was it when you got a bit of the beef and the onion? That's good, I can, I can taste the smoke. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And the mustard bits or whatever. Like... Yeah, the crunch from the mm. actual triple crunch mustard seed. I love that Coslux. One of my favorite mustards. Oh, and yeah, yeah, you can definitely taste the hickory biscuit kind mm -hmm. of smoke flavor that that Bradley imparted on this. 
Yeah, and it. Yeah. You smell it. Mmm. So good. Yeah, it's not too heavy of a sandwich. This is a reasonably lean cut of beef, so you don't actually have to go take a two hour nap after eating one of these guys. So if you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel for more easy barbecue recipes like this. Smash that like button if you think we earned it on this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in, guys.